First, we had the count, and now in some places, a recount. We've had some extremely close races, some upsets, and some clear winners. And while we're still waiting for the results on some key races, one thing has become very clear in this election 2020. Women have been shattering glass ceilings. This is Politically Speaking. <laughs> From NBC7 News, this is Politically Speaking. Thank you for joining us on Politically Speaking. I'm your host, Priya Shreether. We have a great show for you today, talking to some of our area's new women leaders and a re-elected veteran. We begin in the 53rd District, where Susan Davis was the longest serving representative in San Diego's Congressional District. Now with her retirement, the 53rd Congressional District has gotten new leadership. I sat down with Congresswoman-elect Sarah Jacobs during her freshman orientation in Washington, D.C. this week to find out her priorities for the future of the 53rd. First of all, Sarah, congratulations on your victory. How are you feeling so far? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I'm so honored that the constituents in the 53rd Congressional District have put their faith and their trust in me to help our district and our country through this really difficult time. And, you know, being here in Washington, D.C. for new member orientation, I am struck with just how much work we're going to need to do. But I am ready to roll my sleeves up and get to it. Yeah, I know you mentioned that you're in Washington, D.C. right now, and a lot of us might be wondering, I mean, what does freshman orientation look like behind the scenes? What are you guys actually doing in those sessions? Well, obviously things are very different this year because of COVID and we are being socially distanced and doing a lot virtually, um, but it really does feel like going back to college. Uh, we have our class of 2020 mugs. We are learning all about uh, ethics rules, uh, different policies and procedures of the House of Representatives, how to set up our offices, getting to know each other, and then we will have a lottery to pick our office assignments. That does sound a lot like a college, a college orientation, but during a pandemic, so definitely a little bit different. Um, is there chatter amongst your classmates about, you know, the presidential race? This has certainly been a unique one, especially the aftermath of it. What's the discussions about that going on? We as a freshman Democratic class are so incredibly happy that we are going to get to serve in a Democratic majority in the House and with a Democratic president. Luckily, in our freshman class, we actually have the chair of the Georgia Democratic Party, Nikema Williams, that I'm very honored to serve with. Uh, so she has been keeping us up to date on everything happening in Georgia, and we are hopeful that we will also get to serve with a Democratic Senate. And I think we have to bring up the elephant in the room, though. I mean, we haven't seen President Trump concede yet. Is that something that's causing concern amongst your classmates? Look, it is not up to Donald Trump to decide who won the election. It's up to the American people and to our institutions. And President-elect Biden has set the tone for our party that we are going to move ahead, that he will be inaugurated in January, that our class will be sworn in at the beginning of January. And then we're going to get to work for the American people. And Donald Trump does not get a say in that. And I mean, let's talk about the 53rd. You're going to be leading this district, representing this district after Susan Davis, who was the longest serving member of San Diego's recent congressional delegation. Have you gotten a chance to speak with her since your victory? And what are some of the things that you want to continue from her legacy? And then also some of the things that you're hoping to do a little bit differently. One of the things we really want to keep is her constituent services. You know, she's widely known here in the House of Representatives where there are 435 members for being one of the best on constituent services. And that's definitely something we're going to keep. Uh, and. Uh, you know, one of the issues I really want to make sure I'm working on is delivering for our military families and our foreign policy and national security uh, and really making sure that San Diego has a seat at the table when we're talking about foreign policy and national security issues since it has so much implication for our region. And then, you know, I have some priorities that are a little bit different. I really want to focus on early childhood education, on child care. Uh, you know, Susan Davis uh, has really been amazing in higher education and apprenticeship. And I know I got a chance to talk to you before your victory, before the election, and we talked about a variety of issues that you wanted to focus on, including gun control, um, climate change, and then, of course, 
COVID-19 stimulus and response with everything that's on the agenda right now? I mean, how are you going to prioritize what to focus on first? I'm very hopeful that this lame duck session of Congress is able to pass some assistance for our families and our small businesses before the holidays. Uh, frankly, I think that it's an abdication of responsibility for Congress to go home for the holidays without providing assistance to the American people. But I also know that it likely won't be enough. And the first thing that our new Congress is going to have to do is to get this public health and economic crisis under control. And I know I mentioned to you that one of the themes that I wanted to focus on of this show were women in politics and women leaders. And you know, we really saw a record breaking year this election cycle with 131 women so far um, that are gonna be serving in the next Congress. But at the same time, um, they're still representing less than 25% of the seats in both the House and the Senate. As a newly elected woman politician, how do you feel about the representation of women in American politics? Look, it is amazing to be serving uh, in a Congress that has uh, so many women. And I am really looking forward to all of the priorities we're going to be pushing together and especially making sure that we get support for childcare into any stimulus plan that gets passed. And we know that it's not enough and we are going to have to do the hard work of making sure that as we are looking towards future elections, we are recruiting people who look like their communities who represent America and then we are supporting them to help them win. And I'm really looking forward to assisting our party with that effort. Thank you so much for your time and good luck with the rest of your orientation. Thank you. And straight ahead on Politically Speaking, I talk with the woman responsible for flipping the County Board of Supervisors from red to blue for the first time in 30 years. And a conversation with Assemblywoman Lorena Gonzalez about what's on the agenda for the California Assembly. Stay with us.